Good evening, Faith Bible Church. Uh, welcome to our uh, weekly uh, Facebook Live uh, prayer meeting and Bible study uh, devotional. Again, this is Maxon sitting in for Pastor Frank, who will be back next week. In fact, I believe he's coming home today. Uh, it was so good to see many of you on Sunday morning uh, inside the building for the first time in, in months. Uh, the acoustics were much better than outside. Uh, crowd was pretty good. Uh, don't want to say who, how many because I really don't know, but it was a good crowd and uh, really good fellowship. Uh, hope to see a lot that uh, weren't there. Hope to see you Sunday morning. Again, we'll be meeting uh, inside the building uh, and uh, I hope for just a, a resurgence of just the enthusiasm. It was so great to sing together. Uh, to worship in the building, not like the, not that the building is the be-all, but uh, just to see people uh, for the last three weeks has really been uh, really been great. Uh, next Sunday again, as I just said, uh, we'll be meeting inside again, uh, uh, taking all the precautions. Uh, wear a mask if that you feel comfortable. Um, in fact, I would bring a mask just in case you're around people that, that don't feel comfortable with that. We've been, we're maintaining a, a good social distancing inside. Um, every other row is up being occupied. occupied. Uh, we open the balconies and uh, again, uh, lots of uh, things there. Children's go, children go down for their program and stay there. And it's, it's been, been working really good. Hopefully this won't last uh, too much longer. Uh, and we'll be able to get back to a real packed worship uh, service uh, Sunday morning. Uh, as always, uh, be checking the uh, emails. Uh, the weekly newsletter that goes out has a lot of information in it. Uh, little um, teasers for from Pastor Jason on the sermon uh, for that Sunday morning. Uh, some uh, resources. Uh, again, uh, all the contact information, email addresses, and and uh, things that you would need to keep up on the announcements at Faith Bible Church. Um, this week's missionary uh, highlight is the International Project in New York City. Uh, Kevin and Jeannie King, uh, great ministry reaching internationals uh, for Christ uh, in uh, a very uh, diverse uh, city of New York. Uh, and then as they reach them, many of these uh, go back to their countries with the gospel. Uh, for years, their primary ministry was in the colleges, uh, on campuses, uh, Discovery Bible Studies, uh, reaching students uh, here, uh, many of them grad students from foreign countries, uh, and then uh, reaching them for Christ, and they, then they would go back to those uh, countries. Uh, the ministry has been expanding. Uh, I have their newsletter up here, and I just want to read some of the exciting things. Many of you know that we were involved months ago. Um, in fact, it was um, probably a year ago in uh, gathering material for their uh, planned thrift store and community center. Um, the good news is that uh, they were ready to open, uh, but then the coronavirus hit. Uh, but they have been able to open uh, for a sidewalk uh, curbside uh, service. And let me read just a few things that in their latest uh, update letter, if you don't get that. Uh, shows a picture of the community uh, store and thrift center, a line of people outside. And uh, they write this, this is the most beautiful thing we've seen in a long time. This week, the thrift store was allowed to reopen for curbside business, and there has been a constant line outside the door. Many of the customers are Arab Muslim women from the neighborhood. There have been good sales, but more importantly, some great conversations. We couldn't be more excited. Um, in the meantime, with coronavirus, they shared a little uh, blurb here, a picture of many boxes of food that they had uh, made up and they uh, they wrote this about that. Before opening for business, we were able to meet neighbors and show care for them by handing out food boxes outside the thrift store to those in need. Uh, and then they wrote this, they had a great testimony uh, 
from this uh, ministry, and, and I just want to read uh, this one section here. Our Queens team and Rome team have also distributed boxes of food to many unreached people group families. The boxes included information about the gospel, and team members prayed over each family as they made deliveries. One Muslim woman in Rome broke down in tears as she only had one day's supply of food left for herself and her son before the team arrived. Another woman asked the team member, I know you have always been kind to me, but there is something different about you. What do you believe? Please pray for spiritual fruit as each uh, team follows up on on such receptive people. So there's there's been a lot of fruit from the uh, uh, thrift store ministry uh, already, even though they're not really open uh, fully for business. So continue to pray uh, for that. Uh, also, uh, a little uh, another little section that uh, Jeannie wrote. Uh, we have a new sister in Christ. My favorite day of quarantine was the salvation of an Indian grad student we had gotten to know this year. She led the Hindu Students Association, and we partnered with her for our Bollywood event back in November. During a difficult time recently, she testified that she saw a vision of Jesus and put her faith in him. This is a common testimony of former Hindus who come to Christ. We have spent many hours in prayer for our unreached friends, and we praise God for answering so clearly in revealing himself to Sister S. So just some great testimonies of uh, a ministry reaching people. Um, they come from countries where it's very difficult to send missionaries to and would be very much more expensive. So a very fruitful ministry. So continue to pray for the International Project, uh, Kevin and Jeannie King. Uh, many of you know, uh, some of you would remember the, the, uh, uh, the Roses. Uh, Jeannie Rose uh, married Kevin King and... Uh, Jeannie's been, uh, grew up with our daughter Kathleen, has been like a second daughter, and uh, we really uh, are excited to see the ministry they've uh, developed there. Uh, long uh, prayer, uh, prayer list on our weekly prayer bulletin. Uh, again, goes out by email. If you don't receive that, please sign up for it. Um, I won't take time to read through the whole list. Uh, I noticed in reading through it today, though, that uh, many of the uh, prayer requests need updating. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, continue to send in current prayer requests uh, to the office. The email addresses, you can send it to, to uh, Heidi at faithbible.org or Frank at uh, faithbible.org. And uh, so we can get that list, that list updated. Very important to keep praying for one another and to keep praying for our missionaries. Uh, one thing I would like to highlight, uh, those of you that are on Facebook, uh, I'm not on very much. Uh, in fact, this is really new to me to be on live. Uh, I hope there's more than two people watching, but uh, I know my wife is watching. Uh, but uh, uh, it's been uh, really neat to see pictures of Tim at home. A uh, big smile on his face, sitting out on the porch, enjoying the sunshine in the backyard. And uh, we're so happy for the, uh, the really the miracle of God's grace in Tim and Patty's life. As uh, Tim came through this surgery uh, so well and is recovering, continue to pray for them. Long road ahead, he still has about probably four, four and a half weeks of um, intravenous site uh, antibiotic to go through through a port uh, that can be a little difficult with getting infections so uh, continue to pray for Tim in that uh, respect. Uh, before we start a Bible study, uh, real short, uh, I know it goes long as Pastor Frank, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I uh, just want to share a few thoughts tonight, but before we do that, let's uh, ask the Lord's blessing. Father, we do pray uh, as we come uh, before you on what would normally be our prayer meeting night, Father, that uh, we would consider really taking some time this evening to pray for uh, our church, for our leaders, for our missionaries, uh, Father, for um, one another in the body of Christ, Father, uh, that you would uh, uh, take what we uh, share tonight, Father, and make it a blessing. Father, encourage our hearts because of your goodness and your grace. And we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Uh, last week I shared a few minutes uh, about uh, crises. And I think you'll agree that uh, uh, we have crises du jour. Um, there's a crisis uh, for everybody. Uh, you can pick yours. Uh, but we looked at uh, the Apostle Paul for a few minutes and uh, the fact that even though Paul was went through crisis almost his whole uh, uh, Christian experience, he always had the, the correct focus. Uh, we looked at a couple passages that, uh, that uh, saw Paul focusing on the gospel uh, in both his prayers. Uh, we saw a couple instances where when he prayed and asked for prayer for himself, his prayer was that there would be open doors and that he would be able to effectually share the gospel message to open uh, hearts. Uh, and then in his actions, uh, when he shared with the Corinthian church, uh, how he came to them. Um, he, he came to them uh, in weakness, uh, not with persuasive speech, but that he would know only Christ and him crucified. So Paul's focus in crisis was always uh, away from the circumstance and away from the crisis and toward reaching people for Jesus Christ. And it got, got me to th thinking, of actually, I can kind of change uh, what I was going to share tonight. Uh, but it's on the line of uh, uh, being thankful, even in a crisis or in a chaos situation. And uh, again, we're, we're in a new, we're breaking new ground here with uh, this uh, lockdowns. And unfortunately, it seems to be coming out of that. But uh, unrest in our country, uh, situation in the world is not much better. Um, but, uh, I think sometimes I, I found myself, um, with much thinking about the crises and not much being thankful. And that was brought to my mind, uh, really, uh, forcefully in reading one of, uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon's uh, devotional, uh, is, uh, he, he has written a very, uh, very popular uh, and great series, Morning and Evening, uh, devotional for the morning and the evening. And uh, on June 9th, uh, he was, uh, he shared, and he'll take a phrase or a verse and share a thought and uh, has some great things to say. And this got me really thinking about my not being very praiseful or thankful um, in times of trouble or crises or trials. Uh, and let me, I'm going to take a few minutes and read it to you. This is Spurgeon's uh, morning devotion, June 9th. Some Christians are sadly prone to look on the dark side of everything. No, we wouldn't do that, would we? And to dwell more upon what they have gone through than upon what God has done for them. Ask for their impression of the Christian life, and they will describe their continual conflicts, their deep afflictions, their sad adversities, and the sinfulness of their hearts, yet with scarcely any allusion to the mercy and help which God has vouchsafed them. But a Christian whose soul is in a healthy state will come forward joyously and say, I will speak not about myself, but to the honor of my God. He hath brought me out of an horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. The Lord hath done great things for me, whereof I am glad. That's from Psalm 126, verse 3. Such an abstract of, of experience as this is the very best that any child of God can present. It is true that we endure trials, but it's just as true that we are delivered out of them. It is true that we have our corruptions, and mournfully do we know this, but it is quite as true that we have an all-sufficient Savior who overcomes these corruptions and delivers us from their dominion. In looking back, it would be wrong to deny that we have been in the slow of despond and have crept along the valley of humiliation, but it would be equally wicked to forget that we have been through them safely and profitably and have not remained in them thanks to our almighty helper and leader. 
who hath brought us out into a wealthy place. And then he said this, and it really got me thinking. The deeper our troubles, the louder our thanks to God, who has led us through all and preserved us until now. Our griefs cannot mar the melody of our praise. We reckon them to be the base part of our life's song. He hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Wow. Uh, Paul had the right focus. Um, but as, as we read the letters of Paul, Paul also was a, a praiseful person. Uh, he was one that praised God. He was a thankful person. I think of in the beginning of his letters how many times he thanked God for the, the recipients of the letters he was writing. Uh, he was very thankful. Uh, and I wondered as uh, thinking through these things that are happening in our country, thinking through what's going on, thinking through being locked in for, although I've been sneaking out quite a bit, but, uh, and wondering if I've neglected really to praise God for so many of the things that he's been doing. Uh, case in point, uh, I really believe had it not been for the coronavirus and the, uh, the absence in hospitals of elective surgeries, that Tim Schuler might possibly not be with us. Because that whole event happened in a, in a hospital setting in which the surgeons were free, uh, equipment was free, uh, people to do angiograms were free, the best people. Um, and praise God in four and a half days from the time he uh, first got a diagnosis that something might be wrong, Tim had surgery. Praise God. Have I really stopped to praise God for some of the things that um, came about because of, of these, uh, this crisis? I made a, a real short list, uh, just a few things. Um, I, I, again, I shared the miracle of Tim getting into surgery. I think God protected my family. Uh, no one in our family, praise God, has, has, had the, the, uh, has been affected with the coronavirus. Uh, God protecting the members uh, of our church family. Uh, there may be one or, or two. I, I don't know of anyone. Uh, uh, and yet many. Um, in our church family, we've been pr pretty much free of that. Uh, God protecting members uh, of our church that are first responders and, and health care workers. Um, with, with limited, uh, we have some relatives of, of some of our members that had mild cases. and uh, uh, But uh, really, it's just a praise to God. Um, I realize I haven't praised God for, for giving me a greater appreciation for in-person fellowship. Uh, I miss you guys. I miss uh, saying ho hello to visitors. Uh, I miss going out to dinner after church. Um, just the interpersonal uh, hugs, handshakes, back slaps, uh, just the personal greeting. I've, how much I've missed that uh, and what it is to the body of Christ uh, as an encouragement uh, someone coming alongside and, and sharing a prayer request or saying they've been praying for you, something in your life, on a personal nature, uh, and not, uh, not a virtual uh, kind of a meeting. It's, uh, I miss that, uh, and it's given me an appreciation for it. Uh, more time with my family. Uh, my, my, my wife might uh, have a tendency to look over her shoulder when she's cooking dinner. She hasn't appreciated that so much, but uh, more time. Uh, I've actually seen my daughter uh, more. They they walk down. We walk down there. Uh, uh, it just seems like there's there's been some more time. Uh, more time for morning devotions. Uh, not so rushed. Uh, uh, more time in the morning to start out right. Uh, read scripture. Pray. Uh, a lot of things that I think I have missed and I haven't been more been as uh, thankful to the Lord and praising him 
for that. I uh, just want to share a, uh, a couple of verses uh, about, again, an example from uh, the Apostle Paul uh, in writing to the Philippians. And this is a certainly not a, uh, a very familiar passage uh, to most of us. Uh, in uh, Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 4, let me read down through uh, verse 8. And again, many of you probably have this committed to memory. Uh, and you, you remember that uh, and Paul was writing to a church that was started in a town where he was beaten and run out of town. Um, and then they suffered persecution as they grew. Uh, and he's writing back to them, persecuted believers, uh, writing from prison. He writes this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your genuine, genuineness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Oh boy, I think we can, we can say uh, amen to that statement. Do not be anxious about anything. Oh, not even a crisis, a coronavirus, sickness, turmoil in our country. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, and here's, here's the phrase that I, I think I've been missing lately, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. With thanksgiving. Lord, have I been thankful for the disruption in schedule. Lord, have I been thankful for, that I have to wear a mask when I go into a store. Have I been thankful? Uh, actually, wearing a mask, it's given me a you know, and having to talk around it has given a couple of opportunities to uh, share with people how grateful I am to God that I haven't gotten the virus and how thankful I will be when I don't have to wear a mask. Thankful. Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then this great uh, statement in verse 8 about what we ought to be thinking about. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on, about such things. And again, uh, maybe I haven't been thinking about the praiseworthy things, the things in everyday life that we've uh, come to uh, have to live that are different than we used to do, a different way we have attended church in the last three weeks. Have I really been uh, thankful and praiseworthy and thought about them as praiseworthy? I hope, uh, I hope I will. I hope uh, as God is molding me, as he is molding you, I hope that we will uh, see the circumstances that God has us in as certainly not something that was a surprise to the Lord. He has a purpose. Uh, often it's uh, in some of the unusual things we have to do. Uh, where, our, where everybody else, including ourselves, is out of their comfort zone, and uh, often uh, very open to uh, listening to a, a uh, live out loud kind of a statement about how good God is and how, um, how happy we are to be part of the family of God and children of God through our faith in Jesus Christ. I hope you'll spend some time in prayer. Uh, tonight about some of the requests. Again, the prayer letter is pretty, uh, uh, the prayer email is pretty extensive. I uh, try to pray through that, pray for our church, its leaders, uh, for our outreach in the community. And uh, uh, we're seeing even, even Sunday visitors came to the church with some connections with some of our people and 
just uh, God still work. Uh, God bless. Hope to see you Sunday. And uh, signing off. Uh, Pastor Frank next week.